Which biological breakthrough has had the biggest impact on science? If asked, most people would say something like evolution, or maybe the mapping of the human genome, or even the discovery of the DNA molecule in the 1950s. And to be honest, they're probably right. Those discoveries were amazing, and they've really shaped the face of science as we know it. However, there's another process, one which was discovered much later, which is really being used a lot in today's science and has a huge impact on our current knowledge. And that's the process of cell culturing, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Cell culturing began in the 1900s, but only really took off in the 40s and 50s with the discovery of what's called HeLa cells. HeLa cells are cells which are basically immortal. They're cells that can regenerate over and over again without being degenerated. Back in the 20s and 30s, scientists would spend more time trying to keep cells alive than they actually would studying them. The discovery of HeLa cells really allowed the process of cell culture to take off. And today, it's used for a wide range of applications. Things like IVF, as well as bacterial cultures, wouldn't be possible without cell culturing. And if you think about how important it is for infertile couples to be able to have children, or how important it is to make bacterial cultures so that we can study new types of antibiotics, or even do cancer research, you can see how important the cell culturing really is. And it's not just in the medical field where cell culturing is used. If you look at the beer and wine industry, without cultures of yeast, those processes wouldn't be possible, or at least they wouldn't be in the amounts they are today. Even in the bread industry, without having cultures of yeast, you wouldn't be able to have the yield of bread that you do, and therefore you wouldn't be able to feed the hungry as well. So you can see just how groundbreaking the discovery of cell culturing really has been. Cell culturing has a number of steps that you're going to need to know if you're studying, say, C12 biology. There are three main steps that SACE expect you to know. The first step is dissection. You're going to have to dissect the tissue that contains the cells that you want to culture. That exposes the cells. Once you've dissected the tissue, the second stage is to place that tissue into a suspension medium of protein digesting enzymes. Those protein digesting enzymes in the suspension medium are going to break down all the protein fibres that are holding the cells in place and it's going to release them so that you can culture them. The third stage, once you've released the cells, is to place them into a culture medium with all the requirements they would need and allow them to grow. Now that's the next thing that SACE, the stage two biology, really wants you to know. You need to know the requirements that go into the cell culture. Now there are five main requirements that you should really be learning and I'll say why in just a second. The five that I would learn, if it was me studying year 12 biology, would be amino acids, glucose, correct temperature, correct pH and nucleotides. Now there are of course many other requirements that need to go into a cell culture. Basically anything that a cell would normally need in its environment, it's going to need in the culture. However, there's no point in you reinventing the wheel by learning things and their processes that you haven't learnt already. You should have already learnt enough in Year 12 Biology that you can remember those five things. You know that a cell needs glucose because a cell needs glucose to do respiration. You know that a cell needs amino acids because it needs to make proteins through protein synthesis. You know that a cell needs correct temperature and pH because it's, otherwise it's enzymes will denature. And you of course know that it needs nucleotides so it can do DNA replication. So those are the ones I would pick. There's a whole host of other things you could pick. You could say that it needs growth factors because it needs to go through the cell cycle. You could say that it needs a correct matrix to bind to. You could say that it needs antibiotics so that it doesn't get infected. But those five, glucose, amino acids, correct temperature, correct pH and nucleotides, I think are the easiest five to remember and you shouldn't need to know any more than that. So what have we learned today? We've learned about cell culture and how important it is. SACE will want you to have an understanding of at least one application, modern day application of cell culturing. You also need to know those three steps, dissection, suspension and then culture, and you need to know at least five requirements for the process. Like I said, glucose, amino acids, correct temperature, correct pH and nucleotides. I hope it helped and thank you very much.